Thank you so much for staying tuned. If you just joined us, this is TMI. You can call it this morning on ITV. You'll be right on point. Like I said, in course of opening the discussion, well, I say this show or this segment for today is all about testing the strength of parties before, during, of course, after primaries. After the primaries, will the parties remain the same? Will they become more united? Will they become indivisible? Or, after the primaries, the parties might just get weakened, or loyalty will be rearranged, unity shattered. A friend of mine said it's better to have a good primary than to go out there and mess up. If you have a good primary, the part we have lesser work to do. But if you have a bad primary, believe you me, it will be very difficult for you as a party or your party to win an election because there will be so many disgruntled, disenchanted, unhappy elements marauding around your party. Once members of the party, because they're not treated fairly or well enough, they might just turn on the party. And that might just make the party lose that election. So, that is our focus this morning. With me here in the studio, I'd like to start my introduction to the person very close to me. He is a, a political analyst, public affairs commentator, an entrepreneur. Yes, a businessman. Join me to welcome Innocent Efosa. Welcome to TMI. It's on this edition. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. All right. To be close to him, he is a medical doctor, cum politician, if I'm not mistaken, political analyst, and of course, uh, he has this passion for governance. Join me to welcome Dr. Leo Atsikidi. Welcome Thank to you. TMI. It's on this edition. I appreciate your coming. Thank you. All right. My far left. You get to hear go and verify. Yeah, that is just says no. Uh, about, uh, uh, is it a phrase now or clause? Team, go and verify. Uh -huh. But I told him already what that will cost in this place. All the same, you are free to, but you have to be like, hey, I don't agree what you're saying. It's, it's, it's all around. So, join me to welcome Apostle. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Thank Apostle. You, I appreciate your coming. Thank you. Alfred, right? Yeah. I like that name, Alfred. Like uh, Batman's. Uh, Guardian, so to speak, those are love movies. <laughs> okay, now back to what we have to talk about. Well, later on, we'll be making some changes to allow the presence of, uh, yes, some more. Egbe. Yes, it's around the corner. You get to see and hear from him. I saw some more. Egbe. He'll come and talk about his own views and opinion in this particular discussion. Not to worry, you have enough time to talk. Okay, so let me start off from you, Apostle. Afraid. The way the beats this way and what you can see in all political parties in a dual state, inspirations of the primary, what is a political sense telling you? Would it be a healthy primary? Would there be a devastating primary? Or would there rather be a primary that anyone or everyone would generally accept depends on the political party that person belongs to yeah for me uh, i see a peaceful primary hmm. across the political party whether apc pdp or labor i see a peaceful primary hmm. and it's going to produce the candidate of their choice and at the end of the day the the people will not think or decide who to pick among the candidate that will emerge from that party. Hmm. But for me, I see a peaceful primary. Peaceful primary across yes. the political parties. Across the political parties. All right. Dr. Leo Dishay's sentiment that it's a peaceful across the political party, knowing fully well that some parties are beginning to talk tough ahead of the primaries, vis-a-vis -vis the PDP, the APC, even Labour. Some are stepping down already in Labour Party. The APC, the PDP also the same. So do you see a peaceful primary like as a point? 
Well, uh, I think uh, by statement, I can see that he's a prophet. He's prophesying mm -hmm. that there's uh, going to be peaceful primary. But what we have on ground in reality right now, there are a lot of, uh, you know, fights here and there, mm -hmm. especially in the major political parties. And of course, it's expected because I remember during the presidential election, our current president said, power, you don't get power, they don't dash you power, mm. that you have to fight for it, you have to grab it, you have to run with it. Mm. So power, you can't pick power just simply on the, on the platter of gold. There must be fighting, there must be struggle. If you even look back at the biblical days, Saul tried every means to to kill David, just because he wanted to she, he wanted to remain in power, even when he knew God was, has already written him off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, the primaries. I in, on our part, I will see some parties going to have uh, parallel primaries. Parallel primaries. Yes. Because, you know, the way our people go about choosing who is going to lead is, is uh, appalling, especially if the incumbent is insisting or the man who takes his power is insisting this is the person I want, the word I. And once it goes like, even me as an individual, I go against it mm. because I believe that we have a right to choose. We have a right to choose who should lead or govern us at whatever level. In position, if any of the parties try to try to oppose anybody, there's going to be a lot of problem. Mm -hmm. So, in my view, we can have a peaceful primaries if we have a peaceful process. All right. The big if, if Apostle Alfred has said there's going to be a peaceful primary, you are saying. There is a condition attached to having a peaceful primaries. I'll come back to you on that. Well, Enforcer, I know you're an entrepreneur. You've been watching, you're in a dust state, you perceive what is going on in the political scene. So now, what do you have to say about that? The only way we can really have a peaceful primaries, if the leaders are not biased, if they are doing what they're supposed to do, they are transparent, and um, that will really affect the, the, the election if the leaders are not straightforward. Because at the end of the day, if the, uh, the party are divided because of the, uh, the primaries was not really conducted the way it was supposed to be, it's going to really affect the election and the party will be divided. That's the only way we can have a peaceful primary if the leaders, the leaders of the party, you understand, if they are transparent and they are fair. Mm. If they are transparent and fair. Yeah. All right, now let me come to you, Apostle. You heard the reservation. They talked about fairness. And of course, the doctor used the word if. Even a point of having a parallel primaries if the situation is not well handled. If you take a look at the PDP right now, there seems to be, if not there seems to be, there is this information making the rounds that uh, the aspirant in the party vis-a-vis -vis the party governor is not happy with the way things are going do is going to purchase form and all that we have another strong man also in the pdp according to some persons it seems to be the anointed one of the party and of course we have orders that are still there that's in pdp saying that they will not step down for anybody despite the further meetings we heard about they not attend the meeting. 
Do you think it will be a smooth ride for the PDP? I'm going down to parties right now. Yes, uh, for me, uh, PDP is a large party, mm. and uh, there might be the, the little disagreement within them, but I know they know how to settle themselves. But apart from some few individuals who just feel that, oh, it is my right, I will have to fight for this. But uh, PDP as a party, they are, they are wise, and they know who to give the ticket to when it can come. The person that will represent the interest of the party and of the people. So we must understand this. Then for me, uh, what I see, like what I've said before, the problem is going to be peaceful. But though we are going to be having some rancor here and there. Now when there's rancor, is that peaceful? Yeah, peace will come in. I mean, it's like, you know, no, no, you're talking about come. rancor right now. Yes, we'll peace. peace will come in at the okay. end of the day. Before, after, during the primary? Before the primary, there's going to be peace. And okay. after the primary, there's still going to be peace. I know. You know, I know that very well. So there might be a little talk here and there. It's a family affair. They will always go back to join, but say, "Look, we don't want this." Okay, let's settle down, and they will get to that point where they will not agree. Mm -hmm. Because you are saying that there's, there's no drawing board right now to get back to. It's fight to finish. No, nah. you, you, you're not you're not in support of that. No, no, no. I'm not in okay, fine. I'm in support of that. Okay, fine. Well, uh, Doc, you said that might just be power primaries. What is given? Uh, uh, that notion to you because we take a look at uh, the APC Liberal Party yes these are also large parties but we have so many persons that are not satisfied what is happening in the party some even stepped down from being members of the party take it up from there uh, you see uh, <clears throat> we have had uh, similar events in the past in the, even in those states well, I, I, you were discussing, you were mentioning PDP. Yeah. So I will still just narrow my discussion based on mm -hmm. the party you just brought forward. All right. Now, the, we have had similar issues in the past. I think it was during House of Assembly elections or so in, in this same party you are mentioning. And right now, if you look at the, the division or the uh, disharmony between the the current, the incumbent, mm. and uh, his, his deputy, they are, they, they are going different ways. Mm. And now, let me tell you, if any, any of these parties, if they want to have a peaceful primary that we may eventually lead to them winning the election, they must allow the process to go through the normal, the lay-down procedure. Mm -hmm. When you, you, you anoint a candidate, remember in Edo State we have about 5 million persons or so. Yes. One person cannot just think that he's wiser than everybody. That is my view. Even if you have somebody in mind, allow the person to go through the, the, the normal process. Now, I have contested elections in the past. The idea of just telling people, go step down for, for this by fiat is not acceptable to me. I would rather go. Let me lose. Mm. But if you allow aspirants to meet themselves, they sit and discuss among themselves. The one who thinks you know, for example, let me veer off a bit from the party you mentioned, like in the APC, mm. where they had about 29 aspirants. Now that is large. Yes. That is I, much. I agree with you. Mm. But you sh we should also know that naturally some will fall by the wayside. Mm. If you remember the parable of the sower. Yes. Only a few survived at, at, at last. Mm. That is exactly what is going to happen. Because... If I had money, you would have seen my posters. If I had money to make posters, you would have seen them in town that I want to contest for the governorship seat. Some are just there just to, for their thinking of what will happen after the election. Hmm. Maybe they should be remembered and given some, or they should negotiate with them so that at the end of the elections, they will remember them. That is how it goes. And if you allow people to fall off by themselves, mm -hmm. 
it, there will be more, it will be more peaceful. But when you look at people by their faces, you say, oh, this one, and I don't like your face. Go and sit down. Or this one, uh, you, I don't think you can win. Who told you? If in the last presidential and national assembly elections, hmm. some people they thought can never win one. And that could be what's going to happen in some of the elections that are going to take place here hereafter. So in my view, the parties, PDP, I foresee them having a, a parallel primary if they, if they are not careful. Power primaries. I'm telling you, because the way the deputy is standing and the way the governor is standing, it might lead to a parallel pr primary. Hmm. All right. Except they handle it. Except they handle it. Yes. All right. I, I will come back to you. Now, having two contrasting views, now, Apostle said, yes, there might be turbulence, but it will be peaceful. But Doc said, for what is perceiving, that might just have a power of primaries. Each faction having their own primaries, and you know what that will spell for the party in the election, because litigation definitely will follow. Now, what do you feel about his own opinion, if you take a look at this party with issues? Uh, was it yesterday or, or two days ago, a very strong member of the Labour Party wrote an open letter saying that he has stepped down. He gave good reasons for stepping down. All right. And now also, in the APC, we are having this, so call it power tosser, so to speak. Who owns the party? You can't tell me to step down. You can't scream me out. Do you foresee these parties having power primaries as opined by uh, Dr. Leo when he was talking about the PDP? You see, um, you see those people stepping down, I... I really appreciate because in a in a place when you don't have say when you can't change anything mm -hmm. it's better for you to step down or walk away mm -hmm. because you see this party they have constitution before they started this process if they if they work with their constitution and the the condition that was attached to these things before this process you see, there's no way you'll be seeing people who want to walk away. They want to follow the due process and see if at the end of the day, they will be able to uh, come out successfully. Because at the end of the day, when you, when you are doing the thing like, this is my own candidate, this is my anoint the anointed candidate, it mm. affects the party as a party and other people. You do, there's no way you'll be happy with it. There's no way you'll be happy. It's not really easy. You get a form for millions of Naira, and at the end of the day, they will not be telling you to step down, or this is the anointed candidate. It's, it's kind of too, too, too. It's not hmm. an easy thing. It's not what you, people can really take. It's better for some people to walk away if you feel you cannot change anything in the party. You walk away. That's the best. That's the best. Yes. In place of you can't walk, you know, we have to stand and fight till the end. Is that what you're saying right now? Yeah. But for what Doc said, he said he preferred to start and finish the fight rather than stepping down. But now, though I'll come to the APC shortly, but for what Doc said, he said there might just be a power primary is in the PDP. Do you agree with what he said? Because he said, taking a look at the body language of the deputy, and of course the governor, no one wants to back down they might just have power primaries vis-a-vis -vis having a primary without each other being present or their candidates or sorry aspirants being present take it up from there yeah for me there is no going to be a parallel primary that for me mm. and what i see is that it is the right of the deputy to say i know go gray mm. it is his right but at the end of the day the candidate the delegate would decide to say okay this is the person we want to give our vote for and, it's, and that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then after the primary, I do not see a parallel primary at all. I do not see it. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the deputy will have no choice. That's okay. Let me just follow the, the party guideline and let the, let the, let the peace reign. Now, what if he wins the primary? Actually. And if he wins the primary, so be it. And there's still going to be peace. But what we are looking for is competent. Somebody that will be able to 
take Edo to the next level. Mm. This is not a season for politics or to begin to say things you know that is not real, that is not achievable. Mm. But to look beyond, do I have the, the, the know how? Do I have the skill? Do I have the wisdom? Do I have the, the, the power? Do I have the political will to bring in people that will help me to, to build on the foundation? that had been laid. For with what I see in Edo, the Ikube governor have laid a foundation for a better Edo. Th that is what I see. Mm -hmm. Now we also need somebody that is that have the same mindset to say, look, this man have laid a foundation. Let me see. Let me let me build mm -hmm. on the foundation. Okay. Not bringing it down. But to build on it and to improve on the foundation. That is it. And at the end of the day, but I know there's going to be a peaceful primary. Mm -hmm. You said it with a smile. Yes. Like, you know. Yes. This but, be a piece of my despite the, the body language. Body yeah. Language. Yes. Okay. Doc, some are saying that APC might just be the party that will venture into parallel primaries because of the power tussle. Not the PDP because they almost have it under control. They're going to allow everyone to contest if they want to contest as aspirants to see who comes out top. But in the APC, they are saying that there was a screening that took place and that screening is causing a lot of problems in the party. Don't you think that the prior problems you're talking about, you talked about rather, might just emanate from the APC? Well, um, you see, I when I said there's it's likely going to be parallel primaries mm. in the ruling party PDP in Edo State. I'm not just basing what I'm seeing on just deputy and the governor. Mm. For example, we know that uh, the South South uh, uh, chairman, Dan Obi, for yeah. him, yeah. we've heard some of the things he's been saying. There is a candidate in Edo South who stepped down for the incumbent before, when he came into their party. It, I mean, it, there's an aspirant, me, mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, I think Obede, mm -hmm. who is still out. Now, the uh, chairman, Sassad, is saying a different thing from what the governor is saying. The deputy governor is saying a different thing from what the governor is saying. And we all know that this, uh, let me use the word, three persons now are not in the same group. We are aware of what happened in the last elections in that same party, how they fought against themselves. And at those center that used to be their, their primary base, they lost the senatorial seat. In fact, they don't have a senator in Edo State right now. And we are all aware what happened, why they don't have a senator. And, and that uh, disagreement is not likely going to be settled in the very near future. Especially when the incumbent is insisting that uh, he has an another candidate. Now, in APC, like I said earlier on, there were 29 aspirants. Yes. As we speak, uh, to my knowledge, about 11 or so have collected uh, the part, the nomination and the uh, expression of interest forms. Mm. Now, APC has, like you know, in Edo State, I'm not aware of a fashion like we know in PDP, like I mentioned. Mm. But we are aware that there are different aspirants will follow us and that does not in any way go to mean that there are factions there are no factions in that party currently now some people say that there are factions already after that screening whether no, no, real no, or sweet. mock screening they are saying that. that some person started in such a particular leader from i don't know no just because wait. of his hand in the party or was in the screening process i am coming to that all right I'm sure you've heard severally that there was no screening. What happened is like uh, we are here. Mm -hmm. 
when I say, okay, instead of all of us going, we say, uh, we say, and uh, my friend, go and look into it. We now sit down together. We say, okay, why don't you allow only a security to go? This, uh, my brother says, no, I don't agree. Then, after, at the end of the day, you now come out to say, you suggested that I should go. Mm. But he said, no. Can you call that a screening? Mm. No. We know that processes of screening, they are well documented. Why how do you, you, you should not, if you don't apply for an exam, you cannot be said to have been screened out of the exam. Mm. It is only when you have, you know, you have applied for the exam that you, they cannot say, oh, this exam you apply for, you are not qualified, so you are screened out. So you're saying that was the screening? No. Because right now, even on the place of newspaper, get to a year, right have now, six, uh, six aspirants. Even right now. And they are saying, no, it's not true. Yeah, even right now, more people that have not even indicated interest, they can still come out. Go there, pick their form, and they go for the screening. Let me tell you, it, this same thing happened during the uh, presidential election. The current president was even screened out by the National Working Committee of APC, where Ahmed Lawa was said to be the anointed candidate of the party. But at the end of the day, who won the primaries? And who is president today? So I say, in essence, it was supposed to be an interface, which was what they did. So you, you cannot be screening candidate, people that have not even, how do you know that all of them can purchase forms? And we have seen it now. You know those uh, who did, you, if you don't want to go to a farm before, you will say, I rain course and I make you not go farm. But if you were determined to go to farm, even inside the rain, you will go to farm. Go to farm. Before you get to farm, the rain will stop. But if you were not willing to go, I beg, make I just sleep, now rain the fall. So you can see, out of 29, we only have 11 surviving. And I'm still telling you that out of that 11, some will still fall out. Because it's not just collecting the nomination form. After collecting the nomination forms, you must go for the primaries, and you know what is involved. All right. All right, I, I will come back to you because there are so many questions also I'm still going to ask about the APC, but you're saying that it's going to be peaceful and all that, but from the feelers we are getting, it's like there's a storm brewing in the APC. Over now to you. With the prize tag on uh, nomination forms by the Labour Party, so to speak right now, as an Indo citizens, 30 million. Do you think that will cause some rancors in this party? Because right now, almost all aspirants are complaining about that price. Now, what do you feel about that price tag on the nomination form? 30 million um, is a lot of money. Hmm. That's a whole lot of money. That's why you're seeing the chaos in the Labour Labour Party already, but you don't expect a candidate to bring out 30 million mm. to purchase from. At the end of the day, they are not using the due process. It definitely cause problem, and it's causing problem already. That's why most of the candidates want to walk away. And apart from that, it will divide the party after the primaries and it, it will definitely affect them in the general election because they will not be divided mind because they know what really transpire in the primaries. Nobody will be happy with that kind of uh, uh, manner because they were not treated well. That's why I said I talked about transparency initially. And the problem comes from the leaders. Because the leaders, because they are, they, are, they are desperate, they want their own candidates. This is the person I really want. Or nobody merits any position except you go through the due process. Mm -hmm. If you go through the due process, at the end of the day, you will not be the winner. Good. 
So be it. Because the, 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 the reason why this candidate, they are angry at the end of the primaries is because they, 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 they were not treated well and it's affecting the process. And that's what affects the, the uh, uh, general election as well because they were not treated well. Hmm. All right. Talking about the Labour Party, also a solid citizen. Well, yesterday or two days ago, an aspirant that was very, really interested in coming from the Labour Party, uh, Dr. Azeme Azene, wrote an open letter that is stepping down. He is um, uh, he's among one out of many uh, that gave reasons why he's stepping down. Now, he said to be treated well in the party, and that also might be the testimony of the deputy governor, might be the testimony of other aspirants in the party. They have gone out there to collect form. Some are saying they are perceiving, they are sensing that the role which Wiki played in the general election, that might just be the role that the deputy governor might play if things do not go his way. What do you feel about that? Yes, uh, that is what they said. And uh, for me, he may decide to play the spoiler role. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the will of God will break forth. The will of God will break forth. Now, if you choose... In this to, case, how do we know the will of God? This now, is politics. Now, now in, in, in this case, uh, what I see, even if the deputy governor choose to say, let me play the wiki role, mm -hmm. for everything you do, there is a price tag. Mm -hmm. You will reap whatever seed you sow. It may take time. You will repeat. They are not saying he will. He say he might just do it. Yeah, whether he's party. going to do it or not. Mm -hmm. But for me, with what I see, I stay aligned with the, with the governor. Not me. Because the governor have a choice. He knows what he has put on ground. He knows. He, has, he knows everybody. He's like a father that has 20 children that, that work with him. He knows the capacity of every children. So, okay, I know brother A or sister A will be able to fit into my plan and vision. So, for the governor have a, a choice. He's only science or what he's he, 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 he no. all knowledgeable. No, see, see. Does he know the intent of a man's heart? No. He, see, let me tell you. For me, yes. I might not know what is in your heart. Yes. But the few time I relate with you, mm. can be for a year, can be for two years, mm. I pick some things from you. There are some words that comes out from me. I will know that this person can do some things. This person will not. Naturally, you will know. So the governor in his wisdom, even though it's okay, I have tested all this person. But I know that this person has the mind of the people. Mm. Politics outside. Can this person do this? Can this person step on toll? Does this person have political will to enforce some laws, to bring in some changes? And if the government said, okay, I think this person will, 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 will bring out what I have in mind to change the negative narrative about governance in a door, yes, we can, okay, we can, we can, okay, the government go ahead. But the, the problem we have in Nigeria today is that everybody wants to say, well, we have a choice. Oh, let us have our will. We have a say. That is, where, that is what brought us to where we are today in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, where we let good luck regain. Oh, this good luck, we don't need a woman, is a, we need a stronger person. We need, and at the end of the day, we bring a Buhari. This is where we are. So, we need to let go of sentiment. We need to let go of emotion. Mm -hmm. And begin to think, does this person have the capacity? Let me go back to Professor Yemi Osimbajo. Professor Yemi Osimbajo have the skill. He, he has been in the system. He knows that as a technocrat, as a lecturer, as a professor, as a pastor, I think I've been able to see some things that these politicians are not seeing. But we said, no, we don't need him. Because party supremacy, and somebody said, we have more money more than this person. And this is where we are today. So I think the, the hour has come for us to let go of sentiment and emotion to begin to think with the level we are now. Who are who can be able to build on this foundation? Is it based on sentiments or emotions for one to desire an office? No, I mean, he said he can do it. After all, been with the governor, he said he don't can you do have it. the other do, Don't you have the capacity to contest? Mm. You have the will. I can contest if I have the money. Mm. Do I have the capacity? Yes, I also have the capacity, but I don't have the money for now. But there's other person that I know that they have the money, they also have the capacity. Why not throw my weight behind that person? Support the person. 
to achieve the goal for, for a better Nigeria, for a better Edo. All right. Well, uh, 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 Doc, it's like this will be your last line of this is going because you told me that you really have to be okay, somewhere. Now, let me tell you. Yes. I, I want to first of all speak on uh, the issue of uh, the, the, the cost of the nomination you mentioned. Yes. Uh, the uh, party. One of the Labour Party. Mm. Uh, briefly, during the AD era, Alliance for Democracy. Yes. I was a, a strong follower of AD. And uh, they, in just like people try to get people in, say no, without commitment. Mm. There was a young man who came from the US and was given a ticket for governorship for Edo State on a platter of gold. No commitment. Let me tell you, a few days to election, we were looking for that young man. <laughs> He disappeared or what? See, what I'm telling you, <laughs> to me, there oh, must be oh, commitment. Oh. And one of the commitments should be finance. No election. And you just that. I'm telling you. 30 just million. Wait. Just listen. That is no binge, you know. Just wait. I have been involved in elections, even right from secondary school days. Mm. Elections are not cheap. No election is cheap. For example, you have to pay all your party agents in the state. And let's say 5,000 naira per person. Check all the polling booths in Edo State. Hmm. 30, 30 million is, is like a pinch of salt in the ocean of what it costs to run an election. Let me, the truth of the matter is that you must show commitment. Otherwise, if you give your ticket to a man who has no commitment, he will trade with your ticket. He no, will no, 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 Doc, in this <laughs> case, you should, you, you should tell us that you should show your money. Because that's what we're talking about right now. What is commitment? Uh, well, people have if you want the marry a wife, of commitment. If you want to marry a wife, is, why is they show the money? Is it no, all about the money? Yes, it's, money is part of the commitment. No money. If, I, if, you, if you look at even the Bible, the Bible says, money and sarate all, all things. things. You cannot come out to say you want to run for governorship and you cannot raise money. The money for you to print your materials, mm. the money for you to even your billboards, circulate it around the do state. What is 30 million compared to what we have on ground now? That is my view. And I believe that if the party says it's 30 million, if you cannot afford it, go to the party you can afford it. Afford it. So if, if they give you there, you that's your business. We have seen candidates of parties who trade with their their nomination few days of oh, trade. I'm telling you, few yeah. days to election. I've told you a story now. Hmm. The young man, we were practically looking for him, and we were carrying our, the, uh, we were carrying the billboard up and down, looking for him. He came only few days to election, and how are you going to do it? Of course, it didn't make any impact. So, as far as I'm concerned, you must show commitment, and part of the commitment for you to show is the money. Wow. So, now, let, let me go back to what he was saying. Mm. Let me tell you, no man has monopoly of wisdom. Not even the governor. Not the president. Not the Senate president. No one man has monopoly of wisdom. What are you telling me? How, if, 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 has he worked with everybody in Edo State? No. How does he know that I, that he doesn't know, cannot do better than the man is calling an another candidate? As far as I'm concerned, the people we know ourselves, even the person they are talking about, you are talking about foundation for eight years, you are leaving foundation. Which foundation are you building for eight years? We need to see concrete things, not foundation. If you keep laying foundation for life, where, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? Not, not foundation. We are tired of foundation everybody is laying. We want to see results. You know, I'm just getting uh, pissed off this morning. Now, uh, but please watch your emotions. Watch your emotions, dog. <laughs> watch your emotions. So, because yes. let me tell you, yes. in this this country, we have been deceived enough. Hmm. We have been deceived in this country. No, the people should choose their leader, not the governor, not the party leader, not the president. The people should choose who should lead them. You are not wiser than anybody. You are only privileged, and that is my take. You were privileged to be governor. So you are not the one to decide who becomes the next governor. All right. All right. Uh, Doc, calm down. Because you know <laughs> you, you have to be somewhere. I want you to be like, you know, intact emotionally. I know you have you want to respond to that. Yes. You don't want to your toilet. <laughs> so your toilet, you're gonna respond. Maybe 
in uh, the second segment. So can oh. you just hold on now? Right. Your last take on the discussion. The money, the turbulence, we can talk about money is part of the commitment. I say, look, that kind of commitment is nerve-breaking. Take it off from there. Uh, and like Doc just said, mm -hmm. uh, the commitment, the money is part of the commitment. That's true. You see, um, after committing your money to this, uh, the primaries, getting the nomination form, mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, you have not been treated well. It's annoying. Just as you said, just now said, the people should choose the leader. People should choose the leader start from the party. The party, they have a process of primaries. If the leader, he not be the one who is choosing, who is going to lead, that's where problem come from. Just as he said, he said, the people should choose the leader. And they should allow the people to, to choose their leader, not anointed candidates. They should go through the due process and let these people choose their leader. That's the only way we can get the best. Coming like at uh, uh, this foundation, I'm looking for somebody, or this is the person who's going to build on this foundation. No. It won't work. You won't get the best person who will do that. What about the money aspect? 30 million just for, some say just for paper. Some are saying that paper is the ticket. If you can't put the bill, <laughs> get out. You see, the, the, <laughs> the money aspect you're just talking about, yes. that's the risk on this business. Hmm. You need to first do, take the risk in anything you're doing. It's either you win the, 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 or you lose. It's the gambling. You said that you lose or you win. But if you, you commit yourself, your money, your time, and everything, and you know you are supposed to be the winner or you are the winner, and at the end of the day, you've not been given the winner, you'll not be happy. There's mm. no way you'll be happy. All and right. it affects the whole thing in the process. Okay. I know they have so much to say, but I have to excuse Doc. He needs to be somewhere right now. I want to go for a break. When we return, we'll continue with this same discussion. Do you feel that the parties will remain the same after the primaries? Do you feel that there will be oneness, unity, when all the aspirants that have been screened and they march out there for the primaries? Will the outcome make the aspirant right now to support the candidate that will emerge, or would they work against the candidate because of how they've been treated? Many have stepped down, others are grumbling, but Doc raised one thing that some persons want to trade with that ticket or with that mandate. Give an example of a young man. That they, you know, just liked and they hoped that it would do something nice. But a few days to the election, the guy disappeared because there is no commitment. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go away.